Sadashiva Samarambam, Shankarasharya Madhyamam, Asmadasharya Pariyantam, Ande Guru Param Param. Ishvaro Gurat Meti, Uchi Beda Vibhagine, Vyomabda Vyapta Dihaya, Dakshina Muhtaye Namaha. Tava Vedanta Sedanta, Gocharam Tama Gocharam, Govindam Paramanantam, Tat Guru Pranatosh Maham. Om. Om Shanti, Om Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Good. Good morning, everyone, except for Cloud and myself. Yeah. Are you? Can you hear me, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Do we have any any contributions today? I saw Dave doing some work there. Maybe he was. Working out some questions, maybe something else. Uh, I do have a follow up I'm thinking about from um, Monday's class. Mm. And uh, so we, we could start with that. Yeah, if please. We want. I think it's a quick one. And uh, I asked a question uh, about, you know, you know, why is there Mythia? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you, you're, my understanding of your, your reply was that it's really unanswerable uh, per. Vedanta, and uh, my thinking was is that does that mean that um, you know why Mithya exists is, is that omitted from Vedanta, just never covered, or is there um, is there an answer or is there a response or does that cover someplace in in in, in the Vedas um, mm -hmm. where to say it's unanswerable? Um, so I'm just kind of clarifying that. So yeah, no, as far as I know. Uh, in, in, in Vedanta, the, the scriptures, the Vedanta scriptures do not address this question, you know. From everything I have read and heard so far, it does not address that. And I heard that <laughs> being said by our teachers, our gurus as well, eh? including Ramji and Paramartana. So, <laughs> but if we, if we dig into the spiritual world, we find some some speculation, some ideas of why, you know, why the projection, why the creation, why this manifestation of the universe. But I, 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 I think they are just uh, philosophical speculations, you know, they, they, otherwise the Upanishads would make it. What is the importance to you know that, you know? As, as I said last week, it's already difficult to understand this power that that produce this apparent reality so it's, it's difficult i mean we, we try to understand this apparent reality because we are one object among an infinity of other objects in this apparent reality called media so we need to understand media and we need to understand the three factors of media ishwara jiva and jagat and this understand is is fundamental for our spiritual uh, uh, Purification or, or refinement, we need to understand that we need to bring into account Ishwara in the field the Dhamma, and understand how to how to behave. So we need to understand that. And uh, and then to understand Maya, it becomes a little bit more sensitive, more, more, more meaningless and, and very subtle and very um, almost impossible as we have been. Uh, <laughs> very fine lately, you understand? But understand Ishwara, no, Ishwara is different because we, we, we understand Ishwara as, as pure knowledge, pure intelligence, the intelligence by, by which all the laws governing our human experience, you know, they are designed. So we need to understand Ishwara as the intelligent cause, and then the material, the energetic, and the universe manifest. To understand Ishwara is one thing, but when we go into Maya, Maya is that which is in between limitless conscious existence and Ishwara, you know, it's a power that brings forth Ishwara, Jiva, and Jagat. So to understand Maya, it's, uh, it's difficult, and the scriptures 
they mention here and there that is beyond the intellectual comprehension. You understand? But uh, we, we, we get the understanding that uh, there is a power that, bring, that brings from the statements of the scriptures. Scriptures say very clearly that, that consciousness is a carta. It does not do anything. You know, it's not a doer. It does not change. It does not transform itself in anything else. In the spiritual world, there are a lot of different circles that bring that that contemplate this notion that consciousness becomes something else. You know, but no, consciousness does not become and does not do anything. But yet, we know that this universe of names and forms uh, are here. We experience it. You know, so therefore, it does exist. So nothing exists without a cause. And we know by the scriptures and by the, by the <clears throat> logic present in the teachings of the Upanishads that this principle, existence, consciousness does not move, does not do anything, you know? It's a witnessing conscious existence principle. So we know that what we are does not move, does not do anything, okay? But yet, something has caused this apparent reality, this projection. So there is nothing exists without a cause. So we have the scriptures revealing to us that yes, there is a cause to, to this manifestation. The cause is Mr. Maya, okay? But Maya is very difficult to be, to be understood. We understand it a little bit by, by tracing back its effect. You understand? From the effects, we try to trace it back and understand a little bit with the help of the scriptures. You understand? But uh, it's not really relevant to, to understand in that Maya. To my, to my, for me, it's important to understand Ishwara. This is really the key. But to understand Maya is, uh, is already not really relevant, but some some of us have an intellect that wants to, to, to dig into those questions more. And then we need to go into a lot of philosophical conversations sometimes, you know? So it's not really necessary to go there, but it can satisfy. And sometimes it happens, it helps to sharpen our mind, our intellect, to go into these philosophical Vedantic conversations, analysis, you understand? But uh, from, from trying to understand Maya to try to understand the motivation, why Maya came you know, and, and, and decided to project this universe. So I have never heard anything except some, some spiritual gossips here and there, which may belong to the Vedic body of scriptures or not. I'm more inclined to believe that it it belongs to the spiritual world, you know, the, the, the new age and all this development in the West and all these is this notions. Maybe there are some of these notions come from, from, from the Vedic culture as well, you know, the Lila no, notion, the, the hide and seek, you know, and, uh, and, and things like that, you know. So, does it, does it pacify your mind a little, a little, a little bit, a little more, Dave? I, I, I think I understand it for me, and uh, and, and I can appreciate it, and I can move on. Um, what, what, what this kind of comes from is, though, I tried to share a little bit about um, my philosophy, if you will, for my my viewpoint about life, uh, with someone who has not been trained. Or has not been right. exposed to Vedanta, right. and uh, um, and then of course they wanted to share their perspective and what they've learned and how what their journey is, and uh, so um, their, their their question was was well why you know what's the what's the why and uh, and I couldn't really answer it and, and this answer is fine but it isn't one I can share with others it doesn't right. help that. Well, and, I mean, uh, if they, so, he really wants to know why, you need to, to tell them. So first of all, you need to understand Maya, and for that, you need to come to a Vedanta class. Because, you know, you have to go step by step until you get to understand Maya. You know, you have to understand Ishwara first, yeah. you as a Jiva, and the Dharma field, the 
that, you know, I mean, it has to go step. You cannot talk about, about Maya. Maya is an advanced kind of subject, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I just, I, I found that, that they really weren't interested in, in listening to me. They were more interested in sharing with me what their approach was oh, yeah. and trying to convince me that what I should do is learn more about their approach and yeah, do I do this and what about this and, I, and like and I don't want to do any of those things I'm tired of shopping I've done my shopping and that's uh, why I have I have suggested a few times not to try to share the data to, to your friends unless they really sincerely ask you to do so you know well I, and I, I was trying not to share my data you know, but just have a discussion about life in general, and mm -hmm. uh, and it just it's a little it's a little isolating for me. It just feels a little isolating that I can't. Yeah, I know. Like, I can't connect with people who I are. Um, you know, when I talk about um, you know spirituality, or I talk about life, or just talk about things really deep, it's really hard to connect with others who are outside of the Vedanta community, and okay. uh, so and I find that so I just. Most of the time, I just avoid the subject, which somehow yeah. feels like a cop out. So yeah, I, I I know I know I hear you and I understand it. So and I, I mentioned to you and and to all of our friends already that once we get into the Danta, we 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 are in a kind of uh, lonely path. We pretty much on our own because uh, how can you talk spirituality to people if they are on the entry level, on the in the la la land level, you know, if they want you know, all kinds of different levels of spirituality. How are you going to share Vedanta, which is, you know, the, the, the highest, the, the Upanishad's declaration. So it's, it's very difficult. I, I hear, I understand the difficult, how I can connect to someone, you know, who is going to immediately label me as someone intellectual, this is just conceptual and, you know, and then immediate the person wants to share or teach you or convert you to their idea. So it's, uh, you, 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 <coughs> you, you on your own, my friend. I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> tell you that before. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've dealt with this, you know, on and off for the past couple of years. And so I, I appreciate the, you know, I had to keep visiting it again and again. And I, I understand. Uh, apologize to others for doing that, but that's just, you know, where I'm at. And, uh, yeah. um, and this kind of connection with others is, is something that I feel like, you know, I want, and not like I feel like I need to, or whatever. Um, most of the time, if, if somebody's interested at all, then I kind of, uh, I, I suggest to them that maybe they read, you know, Eknech Iswaran's version of the Bhagavad Gita, right. which is how I got started. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and if they don't do it, then uh, then I just let it drop. But yeah. I, I also feel like I know that I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to be able to really connect with them at that you know at this deeper level. So you, and, and to talk about politics is very dangerous as well, huh, David? Oh, well, politics, you know. <laughs> politics and religion. I was banned by uh, by my wife. I was banned uh, to have those discussions with anyone. Um, it, you know, especially her her, her parents. <laughs> so. Yeah. Now nowadays to have to have uh, discussions with people of, about many topics has become dangerous. You know. Why we should be able to you know, get beyond that and uh, yeah and share yeah. and and listen and and not try and convert and not try and just persuade but just listen and understand and. Yeah, um, and, uh, but, but we, topic, we need so. we need to set the example. You know, if you, and, uh, if you I, 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 I still want to, I, huh? I still want to. I, I'm just really, it's really difficult to. I know. It's difficult to listen. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's difficult because there is a vasana there of wanting to to share this to to bring it to the other people. You know, it has benefited you, and you want also to to benefit them and so on. But uh, it is uh, it's, it's very tricky. You can, uh, even if you have a good relationship with some, some people, you may spoil your relationship trying to do that. Yeah, okay. So, um, okay, I understand. Thank you. So. You don't like uh, uh, American football? You can talk to football with them? 
but uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, um, yeah. Every once in a while, though, I just want to get I want to get deep and and uh, so and uh, um, but uh, I guess I could do that with you or with others in the group. Well, or, I mean, we have, we have, yeah, we have I get into it every once in a while. So we are lucky to have uh, our our virtual uh, sangha, you know. Nowadays, so just imagine if you did not have this virtual. So uh, you go around and you look at, around your friends, your neighbors in Carbon Day, or I mean, you, you basically, even people who are in the spiritual you know, circle for a so while, they are still not ready for, for this level of conversations we have here. They have no interest, otherwise, they would be joining us. You understand? And, and, uh, um, and you know, I've, I've invited people, and, and uh, they're um, they are where they are. It's their journey. I, I yeah. get that. And uh, so, um, um, but anybody in the group, if they want to connect outside of the group and, and talk, um, I'm open to it. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yes, Ruth. <laughs> if I may. Please. Um. I, the thing I really, um, I guess, enjoy is that um, Vedanta teaches me how to live in the world at, at, um, at the everyday level, <laughs> at the everyday level. Um, and uh, so, you know, if your expect, if, if my expectations are um, I should say, it, or, or how to lose expectations. <laughs> I don't lose it, but to not have them about people or situations. So that's my comment, I guess. It's, it's yeah. like James says, everyday ordinary existence. Yeah. yeah. And most of it is ignorance, right? You know, most of it is in, you know, Maya. So. Yeah. That's the world we live in. Yeah. Yeah. So we, if if we, if anything, we want to work on ourselves. You know, we want to work on our self knowledge, on our, on our certainty. We want to keep doing our nididhyasana, as Ruth say says in, in the day to day uh, you know, opportunities we have. You know, doing whatsoever we want to do our karma yoga. So this is this is the the practice or application. Of, of self inquiry on a daily basis. So we, we, if anything, we want to do that. And that's why the James has that joke that uh, I don't know if he still tells that joke, but in the past he used to tell this joke. So just keep it for yourself, do your work. It's all about you. It's not about others. It's not about the doubt. It's about you. And if people ask you to share, make a, a contract, a written contract, and then you make the person sign, and then you sign, and then you take it to the notary, and then, and then you keep it for a while, and then if the person insists that you want to say something about this Vedanta, and then you say, you know? So, why? Because most of the time, people, they just want to poke us. People want to just poke, you know, to, yeah, I know my son very well. My son, uh, when he starts asking questions here and there, I know that he's trying to poke me too. And then I don't go there. I change the subject. You understand? I don't try to, to, to talk to him about, uh, about self-knowledge or anything or any little thing, you know, that I know read his mindset. So most people, they, they ask just so, so that they have an opportunity to teach you. Arlindo, so can you say that really when, um, in terms of human relationship, that it's really just a play of someone's vasanas with your vasanas? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's going on. It's really not. Yeah. No. <laughs> really. Well, you, you know, you can only relate to people to the degree that you find a common ground. Okay. For example, when I go to the house of, of my mother-in-law, father-in-law, the parents of my wife, so sometimes we spend uh, two hours there, 
between before lunch, lunch, and after lunch. And uh, I need to, to, to relate to them on, 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 those, on those common grounds we have, you know, talk about a little politics, a little bit of uh, the situation of the world and economy. And, you know, I just talk about what's possible to talk. When I go to see my father who has 90 years, 91 this year, so I talk to things even, you know, more simple because he has a simple mind by now, you know. So he repeats himself. So you have to find out something common. The difficulty with relating with people in general, when we, when we, we lack relationship with people, contact with people, the, the, the problem is, we, is that <clears throat> we need to, re, in order to relate, we need to have common values, common ground, common ideas common interests. If there isn't, you know, if you want to relate to someone about self-inquiry and self-knowledge and the person has no interest in self-inquiry and self-knowledge because the person is interested in yoga and other things in the world, you understand? So how can you have a, a, a relationship on that level? You cannot, you know, it's going to have what? A conflict because you don't have a common interest, common value. We need to have common value to relate with people. So otherwise, we have to accommodate, which is a nice quality of a, of a health mind, a mature mind. You accommodate, you look at the situation, you see the value of the people, and you just uh, you tune in with that and you play a little bit. You know, I, I avoid it to, to the max, to, to talk with some sorry, for more than a half an hour, or, or I mean, except my 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 parents, my relatives, you know, my close relatives, and so on. That sometimes in social events, I need to I need to be there, and I have to give my attention. But uh, I try to I try to leave, or I try to go. I always take my laptop to the house of uh, Sylvia's parents, and then after. Whenever thing becomes too repetitive, I just go to another room and I, I go into my laptop, for example. You know? So it's uh, <clears throat> I had this conversation with Ramji in the old days about uh, about how how tolerant he he and Sundari used to be with some saris, and I I I, I realized that maybe I am a little bit more tolerant than them. He used to say that 10 minutes of the most, and then he begins walking away. <coughs> but of course, it depends. With, uh, with our relatives and parents and children and grandfathers and mothers, and, you know, we cannot just do that. We have to be polite and so on and accommodate. Does anybody else have problems with samsari? Samsari are beautiful people. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, I hear what you say. I I feel my relationship with my family has grown more distant. Um, but on the other hand, I feel less emotionally attached to it and I feel more independent and happy also. So even though I feel farther from them, I feel much closer to the self and much happier in my own way. That's so, so, that's so yeah, beautiful, Mark. Good, very, very beautiful. Well put. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, I feel much, much, more, much more far away from them, but I closer and closer to the self, which is my own self. So therefore, I am happy. I'm joyful. Very nice. And, and, Very more, nice. and more independent, more independently able to deal without their emotional support. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point because uh, to depend on people's approval, validation for everything is really trouble, you know. And also just greater acceptance yes. for who they are. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Because you're more content in yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mark was referring to to what usually happening happening in every relationship. It happens that people get hooked, and then there is there is a, 
can co-dependent, you know? So one part depends on, on the other, on, on approval level, accepting level, you know, love level, and so on, and, and vice versa. So it's so nice to just, to just feel like, oh, I'm no longer needy for their approval and, uh, you know, validation and, uh, and so on, you know? So that is a very nice feeling of freedom. Mm. And yet, only then we can really appreciate and love the other. You know, I mean, when I was young, I, I, I walked away from my family in Brazil. And uh, my mother was devastated, of course. And uh, I used to stay for years without even writing a letter. Those days you had to write a letter, of course. And, uh, <clears throat> and I had to do that. I had to do that in spite of, you know, I had to break it completely apart. And then only after several years, I could come back and I was a little stronger to stand on my own and not be cut up again. We saw the game of guilty and uh, blaming and, you know, and trying to make me feel wrong and uh, what am I doing with my life and so on. So we need to sometimes uh, take some distance until we can come back and love them because now we stand on our own we are we are sure about you know our position i don't need any more love approval validation recognition and then i can i can love and appreciate them knowing about their limitations as as uh, i don't know if it roots or, or lean said Yeah, we are definitely alone in this journey, you know. It's, we were born alone and we're going to die alone. So we cannot go leave this world with anybody. I, I also am quite alone here. I cannot share <laughs> with, uh, with anyone, but I find that... Uh, <clears throat> But uh, with samsaris, is, uh, it's a game. I find uh, this, for me, it's a game. I, uh, like you said, I, when I meet with my friends, uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't meet a lot of people, but uh, you know, I, I have some rajas sometimes. Uh, so for me, it's a game. Sometimes I go there, I know that... Uh, I have some talks that are not so high <laughs> talks, so but but I only use it for uh, you know for exhausting these little uh, rajas that I have, and uh, it's okay for me. Uh, yeah. I don't pretend. I don't pretend to impose, uh, you know, uh, my my ideas. And uh, so at the same time, I you know I do. Uh, some you know in YouTube some videos I talk about spirituality you know as you know and this helps me to to share something you know I, I use this method to I, yeah. I do something outside like a service like you know like karma yoga attitude so you do something outside and so are more satisfied because you share something yeah. Well, sharing, sharing is good. It's just that we need to be careful. It should not be a need to share. Be uh, something that is appropriate to share. You know, I mean, oh, it's nice. The person is showing some some open mind. You know, and then and the person has a certain level level of interest. So therefore, I'm going to share a little piece. Yeah, we need to share as well, but we have to be careful. Uh, Arlindo, I also want to ask you uh, about this topic of Maya and uh, because I found it very interesting and uh, um, in when I, this uh, three, four years ago, five years ago, I write my book, uh, I was uh, contemplating a lot about this, you uh, know, this topic, uh, I, I don't know about Maya at that time. I, mm. I don't know about Maya at that time. But I was thinking and contemplating about this fact, no? this, why uh, this illusion is manifest, why, no? This, uh, so I was 
contemplating this and the answer that comes to me was that uh, it was not that the consciousness need to to manifest because it was bored uh, it comes to me only the first thing that comes to me is that uh, um, maya this manifestation is very a little thing compared to consciousness um, you know it's, it's like a side effect i i don't know if i explain uh, me uh, and um, I also share that there is no real reason uh, about that, but I don't know. It's like a side effect of uh, it's it's understandable side effect. It's right to say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know it, it. It can be a good understanding about uh, Maya. <coughs> uh, it. Uh, I don't know. Side effect is I mean, when you take a. a, a substance or medicament so you do that yeah more or less more to have to have an effect and then a side effect is usually is, is an effect that is is not really i mean it's um i i wouldn't use that analogy you know and and, and, yes, and yes. not not even an effect you understand mm -hmm. uh, it's an effect of maya this universe but uh, not of consciousness consciousness is what we said causeless cause it does not cause anything and uh, yet nothing comes into existence without consciousness existence you know it, it somehow it concedes it borrows existence to the apparent the apparent uh, universe you know mm -hmm. but uh, it is an effect of maya definitely mm -hmm. yeah. Not a good analogy, but I don't have others <laughs> analogy mm -hmm. for for the moment. But um, no, that's it. It it looks like the uh, space bar to unmute doesn't work anymore. So and, uh, um, I'm just, just it would it be fair to say, I mean. It's almost like the Jiva needs Maya more, you know, more than, you know, Ishwara doesn't need Maya, but uh, the Jiva needs Maya. And uh, um, so it exists, it, it exists from the Jiva's perspective. And I just wonder if it doesn't really exist from consciousness or from Ishwara doesn't really, you know, Maya doesn't really ex exist. And it's just something that the Jiva needs to understand, um, you know, to try to understand this life or understand yeah. what's, what's going on. So it's just, um, it's, it's, to me, it's like a return to, oh, there I am back being a Jiva again and, uh, um, and identifying with the body, body and the mind. And I'm, you know, I'm caught in that, that boss of that loop of uh, being caught in the body and mind and uh, this need to understand Maya and it's how and it's why and all that is, is based upon, you know, coming from the Jiva perspective. Or if I'm looking at it from a self perspective, then it's it's you know it's really not um, uh, it's, it's not important. It's not it's it's uh, you know I, I don't know about a side effect, but it's just um, that it's you know that's something I can let go of. Um, and again, there I go again. I'm back in the jiva role again, and I'm letting go of being the self. And uh, but it's hard to sit in the self because it, it's hard to what. Self, it's it's hard to be to sit with the self because uh, even when I think about the self, I, I feel like I get the body and the mind, you know, wrapped up into that. And uh, so, um, uh, uh, it, it was so re remembering to go back to the be the self and uh, and then awareness. And maybe that's all I can be comfortable with is just being aware that my exists because a jiva, you know, makes it exist. And so. Oh I, yeah. Maya, Maya is, is a conceptual object, okay? So it's a concept object in the mind of, of the, the Jivas. It was revealed by Ishwara in the scriptures, in the concept of Maya, and then the Jivas concept, contemplate on this concept as the cause of this universe, which includes the, the Jiva itself. Hmm? 
So it is an object, everything here is, is just uh, not real. And, uh, but uh, you said something about Ishwara. Ishwara, it does not care to Maya, does not care to anything because Ishwara is not a, a, a Jiva, it's not a, an experiencing knowing entity, it's the, it's the, it's the, the knowingness that, that, that somehow allows <laughs> Jivas to experience and know, you understand? Shwara is pure knowingness, pure intelligence, and, and, and it's out of this intelligence that the universe is, is created, maintained, and recycled again and again. It's just this conscious, self-conscious being, which is not an experience entity, but it is the, the very stuff, the closest thing to understand Shwara, the, the very sattva, you know? The intelligent, efficient cause of this universe, so that that consists you know, this this infinity of these objects, including the jivas and so on. So Ishwara is a is a, a byproduct of Maya. Maya produce brings about Ishwara, Jiva, and Jaga. You know, Maya is this power. It's a power that brings forth. Ishwara, Jiva, and Jaga. So Ishwara, in some scriptures say that Ishwara is controlled by Maya, who is, a, who is, is dependent on Maya. And some other scriptures comes back and say that Ishwara controls Maya. It's what it means. There is an apparent contradiction there. The contradiction is that although Ishwara is the reflection of consciousness on an aspect of Maya, which is dominant, dominated by sattva. So that brings about this intelligent cause of the universe. So Ishwara is a product of Maya. But once Ishwara comes into place, what it does? It, it, it manages, it, it, it controls, it manages the guna. And then, and only then, it brings about all names and forms. You know? And then it keeps recycling it bring them into existence and break them down, bring them into existence. So this is Ishwara, this is intelligent power, this knowledge power, you understand? So it plays with the three gunas. And uh, Maya is fundamental, is these three gunas on which Ishwara, Jiva, and Jagana project. But then when Ishwara comes, Ishwara is the one who is going to play with these gunas and then turn them into the subtle elements and then assemble all these names and forms of the universe. So, so sometimes the scripture will say that, that uh, Ishwara controls Maya because Maya is often defined as, this, as the three energies, primary energy, the three energies is Maya. And then this Maya, this, this, <laughs> this mirror-like macrocosm, Reflector is going is what produce as a reflection. It produces Shwara Jiva and Jagat. The reflection of uh, consciousness on this mirror-like apparatus on the on the on its aspect, which is predominant by Rajaguna, brings about the Jiva. And the other aspect of this mirror-like apparatus called Maya, which is more predominant with Thomas, brings about the physical material universe. So Ishwara, Maya is the three gunas fundamental, and Ishwara is this, this intelligent power that has the power to later on play with these three gunas and, and, uh, and assemble the elements and then the, the, the entire universe out, out of these primary elements. Well, lindo, Ronaldo, tudo bem? Eu não não está aparecendo a minha imagem porque o meu link está muito ok ruim. É, o que é, eu entendo disso é que as pessoas e isso vale para mim porque eu tenho contemplado muito essa questão é, nós temos que entender que é, Vedanta é, é uma ferramenta né nós não podemos levar o pé da letra claro é uma ferramenta conceitual aonde as escrituras é para você achar a estrela Arundhati é, tem que serem feitos alguns apontamentos para que você chegue até ela, porque ela é muito pequena no espaço. 
Então, é, Vedanta é uma ferramenta, a gente não pode levar ao pé da letra, a gente tem que entender que ela é uma ferramenta e que é, o nosso intelecto tem limitações. Né? Então, é, não, não quer dizer que o que está sendo falado ali é a realidade, assim como você tem o modelo do átomo, é o um modelo. É, não é que não seja a realidade, é o modelo. O modelo do átomo é aquela bolinha com um, um, um núcleo no centro e os elétrons em volta. Mas isso é só um modelo, para te apontar é. a verdadeira realidade. Então, tem certas coisas que nós temos Sim. que entender que não tem como entender. Né? E, e, porque se a gente olhar para todo aquilo que está sendo colocado ali como, como sendo aquilo mesmo... Não é, é um apontamento apenas. Sim, né? Isso que nós sim. sim. É, o, é, o Ronaldo está dizendo uma coisa muito interessante, muito importante, é que o Vedanta... Fala inglês. Not... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo was saying something important, that Vedanta is not the ultimate truth. I'm going to cut it short. Vedanta is not the ultimate truth. We are the ultimate truth, and Vedanta points to that ultimate truth. So everything that we hear about Vedanta, you know, all these, these constructs, this, this philosophical construct, this, they, 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 are, they are concessions to ignorance so that these tools can help us to, to understand which is what is really real, which is our, I, my conscious existence. So Vedanta is not reality. It just helps us to understand what is reality, what is this satya. So they are, they are, they are tools. They are, they are, <coughs> they are sign, sign posts, as some, some would say. You know, some pointers. You know. So we should never take these constructs of Vedanta as, as reality, but they are just tools that, uh, that directs us to. The reality. And the reality, what is the reality? I, the one seeking and searching to, for reality. So the seeker for reality is the only reality. And all these this, this concepts that we, we have from the Upanishads, it serves the purpose to pacify the mind, to resolve the mind so that the mind rests with its Questions and you know and no no I cannot accept that I am this because I have this question that question so we have all this you know so then we we need to have the medicine and the medicine is what it's more reality so ignorance is irreality and knowledge is irreality the only reality is self knowledge I am that but the body of knowledge called Vedanta is another form of ignorance that's going to neutralize the previous ignorance. The, the, the I am the body mind and I'm small, limited, and inadequate and insufficient and so on. This is ignorance. And then Vedanta comes and presents another ignorance, which is, no, you are Brahman, you are limitless and this and that. And that. It's one ignorance that's going to be applied to other ignorance. Now, what is reality? You are the reality. And once you apply this, this tool, this ignorance against the primary ignorance, and then they just, they just neutralize one another and, and you discover that you are the reality. You know? All of this, that's why when we, I mean, this is the ultimate teachings that they are very dangerous to be presented. The ultimate teachings are that you have to throw away everything. You have to negate everything, including the Upanishad and this. None of this is real. The only reality is I, you know. But if you tell this to people prematurely, they, they may develop enlightenment sickness and they, they may get deluded. They may say, yes, I got it all and so on. If you, if you just reject the Upanishad, reject Karma Yoga, reject Ishwara, reject every concept that serves the purpose only to, to cancel the other concepts, you know? And then the person may, may become delusional. So it is a, it is a trick teaching, so to be careful. But that's the truth. The truth is that we are the only reality. Well, Lindo, I how, have is this, how is this to accept that? 
And how hard it is to accept that is something for each one of us to answer. You know? So can I can I accept that and embrace that without any doubt? I, my conscious existence, am the only reality. Yes, Claude. Yeah, I. This question, uh, I was uh, thinking that uh, we say that okay, when you see the objects in the world. Uh, this is Maya, this is illusion. Uh, but we also say, you say also that uh, mm, all the, the, the objects are also consciousness, are also the self. You are self. Um, so uh, I was a little bit confused about that. Mm. Um, why I see, if, if the objects that I see in the world, they are not me, but they are the same. Can we say that they are me, that they are consciousness? Is, is it right yeah. or, or not? And why so, we say that? Yeah, so everything, I mean, if, if the nature of reality is non-duality, everything is only consciousness. Appearing as names and forms or remaining as the formless, the changeless in its nature without any superimposition. So everything is coming. So therefore, so anything that appears, okay, we can say, oh, everything is resolved into consciousness. It's just an appearance in consciousness. It, it's existing mm -hmm. within consciousness. You understand? Mm -hmm. it's nothing. Everything that exists borrows existence from consciousness in consciousness. Okay, but consciousness is none of those things. You understand? Mm -hmm. Those okay. things are not real. Consciousness is the only reality. You understand? Okay. So, <clears throat> what was your question again? Does it answer your question? My question was this: uh, um, It's I, I understand it in a certain level, but I want to know what uh, Vedanta says about this. No, because you see the objects that are not real, but it's also uh, consciousness what you see. Yeah. Uh, you cannot say that it's separate. It's outside yeah. consciousness. Yeah. It's consciousness. Yeah. So if I have understanding, it's like saying uh, a pot and the clay. Is is this the, uh, yeah. the analogy? Because yeah. you see difference in the world. I see yeah. I see a lot of things in the world. I don't see only one thing. I see a lot yeah. of things, but uh, uh, they are all made of clay. It's yeah. You know, it's clay. It's not. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the, under the good understanding of this concept? That's the good understanding. You need to understand okay. the, the substantial nature of everything that okay. is in the universe. All objects, the, the, the dance, what we call dance, and what we call sato, meaning matter and energy. Everything, <clears throat> everything is consciousness. <clears throat> okay. okay. Why? Because it, it, uh, it exists in the same consciousness. Okay. And it's not only that. It is, it's, its existence is dependent, dependable on consciousness, you understand? So it appears in consciousness, it's made of consciousness, but consciousness is none of this. You know? None of this. Consciousness is the substratum, we could say, you know? All of these are limiting words, you know? Some, it's, it's the subject conscious existence principle in which all these subtle, and, and dense object come and go. So does anything exist a part of consciousness? No, of course not. Because uh, nothing exists on the screen of the cinema hall apart from the screen. You know, it, it may appear three-dimensional or whatever, a lot of action, but nothing exists there apart from, from the screen. The same way everything is existing in consciousness and it's made out of consciousness and we know that if we some of the teachings we have it established <coughs> established that consciousness and existence are the same thing and and another limitlessness no? so if we have a physical object whatsoever it may be if we have a physical object 
So we know that this exists. I know that this object, Jiva, exists. What is the difference between the existence of this body-mind construct and the existence of this construct here? Okay. So, no, there is only one existence. You see? So, therefore, <laughs> if I exist and this exists, and if this, which I am fundamentally, is consciousness appearing as the Jiva, so I know that if this exists, although this one does not really reflect consciousness in the same way that I, Jiva, reflect consciousness to become a conscious experiencing entity, this does not. But I know that my existence and the existence of this makes me <coughs> not apart from this in terms of my existence, you know, because existence is just another aspect of consciousness. Mm. That's why we say consciousness is Satchitananda, existence, consciousness, and limitlessness. So everything is consciousness, and everything is revealed um, and is in consciousness. Huh? This is the Mandukya, correct? The yeah. teaching? Yeah. yeah. You, you'll find these teachings in the, in the Panchadasi as well. So, it's, everything is you, Claudio. Not your body, not your mind, it's you. Everything is the only, the only consciousness there is, the only existence there is, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, Orlando, in terms of the teaching in the steps, you know, the um, steps, you first have to reject it as all the, 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 the physical world as the yeah. creator or as existence consciousness, and then you come back to it as accepting it. So there's steps in that teaching, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's uh, that's that's a very important point we should never begin this conversation with someone who is new to Vedanta at this level <laughs> this is this is an advanced level you know? so we need to begin by by discriminating objects from the subject now say consciousness needs to be uh, separate from the object or, or un understandably separate from the object so that it can be isolated and identified as this conscious existence principle and the object as media. So it, this is, is uh, instrumental. We need to, to go through the net net and rejecting, rejecting reality to all the objects. This is the first stage. And then later on, we can begin understanding that in reality, everything is consciousness. But what happens is that consciousness got confused with the object. The consciousness appearing as the jiva got, and we have been what? We have been studying it in the Viveka Shudamani. As the jiva appears and then it gets confused with the objects. The objects occur to this conscious entity called the jiva and Consciousness apparently get confused and think, believes to be the object. So now, how are you gonna, you know, take care of this problem? You need to start separating this object or subject of one subjectivity, absolute subjectivity, until that you can see yourself for what you are, your consciousness. And then uh, that is that is the the the, <coughs> the work, discriminating. It's so easy to get attached to objects, to get involved with objects, to get emotionally involved, emotionally you know, confused. And uh, so we need to keep this satya media discrimination alive all through. So we're kind of back to the to the four Ds. Discernment, you know, detachment, mm -hmm. um, and, and discipline. Yeah. Discipline, yeah. And desire for moksha. Yeah, that's what I mean by devotion or desire. Yeah, devotion, yeah. desire for moksha. But you know, it, it keeps coming back to the four Ds, and I kind of I forget them. I again. Mm. Yeah.
Ô, Arlindo, uh, uma pergunta. Eu não sei se posso ficar fazendo pergunta. Sim, sim, sim. Mas... Tenta, tenta, tenta ser o mais uh, uh, sucinto possível. Tá. O seguinte, então vamos lá. Uh, eu tenho uma parede, um, um, uma pedra, tá? que é um, é um, é um elemento inerte. É, obviamente, eu tenho tamas, rajas e sátua, tá? É, como é um elemento inerte, eu vou ter um percentual maior de tamas, pouco é, rajas, mas eu tenho que ter uma quantidade mínima de sátua, porque eu, para que essa, essa inteligência possa estar sendo uh, atribuída ou, uh, dentro desse, desse material, né? Porque se você sim, olhar, sim. tem os elétrons girando, tem a inteligência sim. de Schwara tem que estar lá dentro. Então, sim. eu tenho mais tamas... Menos rajas, mas eu tenho, um pouco, tenho que ter sempre um pouco de tapa. Sempre. De, de, de tapa para que essa inteligência se expresse no, no inerte, não é isso? Sempre. Yeah. Ah, okay. This is a, a bom ponto. So, uh, Ronaldo is saying that if we have a, a, a solid, inert kind of object, yeah, a stone, so that stone is not self-conscious, it's not, it's not sentient. Sentient, you know, we, we can tell this stone is, is just inert, totally inert. But does that mean that it does not have any sativa to it? That does it mean that it, it's only it's only constituted by Thomas? No. It is constituted by the three gunas, like everything in the universe is constituted by the three gunas. It's just a question of, of its proportion. So there must be some sativa to any inert object because in order for it to come into existence it it it's, it needs an intelligent cause you know the intelligent cause is, comes out of sattva and then not only it in order to, to for it to be held together it needs to have some intelligent there holding it together you know the atoms and, and so on so there is a lot of beautiful alive stone there if we really look into it it's it's a It's an alive being. It's just it's not self-conscious, but there is a lot of a lot of knowledge and and, and consciousness there. So it needs to have some rajas as well, because although it does not have the ability to to move around very rajasically like some animals and some human beings, you know, but still it needs some rajas because nothing can be brought into existence without rajo guna. We need the three elements, the intelligent cause, the energetic cause, and the, the physical material cause. So it needs rajas, and of course it needs tamas, and because it has a larger proportion of tamas, what happens? It's an object which does not contain a subtle body. You understand? Don't ask me if it contains a causal body because I would not know how to answer that. But I know that it does not contain a subtle body because uh, the, the jivas are called jiva only when they become conscious of their environment. Even a plant is conscious of its environment. It responds to environments, you know. So <clears throat> the stone is not a living being. It's called a, a, a inert, although everything is alive in this planet, every raw and so on, but it does not have that kind of aliveness that allows it to, to interact and respond according to its program, to its environment, you know? But there is, uh, there is sattva there, there is rajas, and there is a lot of tamas, and tamas is not a good reflector of consciousness. That's why we say that uh, it, it's, inert material such, a, such as a stone does not have a causal body, okay? It does not have the reflector. It does not have a mind on its own, but may, it may have a causal body, you know? It may have a causal body, but uh, it does not have a subtle body. This is a good question. I will, I will maybe ask this question yeah. to you guys next week. <laughs> My internet is a little bit slow today. Are you guys hearing, listening to me? I have a thought about that. Oh, you do, you do get interrupted, pausing and starting oh. again. Um, so if a rock 
we know no subtle body, wouldn't it have to have one with the macrocosmic causal body anyway? I mean, you can't separate the macrocosm and the microcosm in reality, so yeah. it would have, wouldn't it? Yeah, it makes, it makes sense that everything comes from the macro, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> everything comes from the causal. There is a cause, there is a, 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 a notion, a thought, an idea about the stone and this and that. Everything exists in its cause, seed, potential, you know? dimension and then it manifests. So that's why I did not want to say it does not have a causal body. Very well. Very well said. Yeah. But we know that it does not does not move around, it does not respond. We we can sense that it does not have a mind. So your cat has a mind and you know it. You understand? So the, the other creatures they do have a subtle body. Yeah. Nowadays there are cats that are even doing Therapy, I heard cats and dogs doing therapy. Those cats that do therapy, basically, I think it's introdu introducing Ishwara, the beauty of Ishwara into, you know, equine therapy, therapy horticultural therapy. It's all just, um, that connection that's really healing i think to the mind good So are we had, had we had ended up just trying to um, reconfirm that Thursdays are about an hour because they're trying to schedule my day accordingly. And uh, I'm thinking this is an hour and a half to type of discussion. No, it's one hour. <clears throat> we, should, we should end now. Okay. Is that what you're trying to say now? Okay. And, uh, I want to mention to you that uh, we are a little less consciousness, first of all, and uh, we are working on, on have it firmly established directly, you know, it's a doubtless. Self-knowledge, full total, total conviction about this, you know. And I also want to mention if, uh, if, you, if you at any time, at any point, you, you, you wish to do uh, one more of these meetings, so I'm, I'm open to, to look into that as well. <clears throat> on any other day. Thank you a lot. Thank you. It was a nice session, I would say. I enjoyed it. I hope you also enjoyed. And uh, we meet again soon. Shwara willing. Okay, dokie. Inshallah. Um, thanks, Arinda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.